30 years ago, there was no such thing as a driver recruiter. That was just unheard of. These days, because of the low wages, all the trucking companies have driver recruiters. If you're a new driver just getting into the trucking industry, one of the biggest stress points for you may be an interview with a recruiter. It's truly nothing to be worried about. Let's talk a little about that. Back in the day, 30 or 40 years ago, when the trucking jobs paid really well, truck drivers sought out trucking companies to work for. They either went to uh, a carrier, or they went to a friend that had uh, a few trucks, or they decided whether or not they were just gonna buy a truck and run on their own authority. They went where the money was best for them, where they felt their opportunity was the, the greatest. After deregulation, as the, as the bigger trucking companies began to take more of a hold on the industry, the big trucking companies began to slowly squeeze the wages out of the truck driving jobs to the point where truck driving no longer really paid what it should. And suddenly those carriers realized that there weren't drivers knocking at the door looking for jobs every day. They still had seats to fill, they still needed trucks to move, and to solve this shortage that they had created themselves, they uh, came up with various recruiting programs or they hired a team of recruiters basically to get guys on board. And what these recruiters were being paid to do was, was to sign new, new drivers up, just get them on board, get the trucks moving. They also hired teams of recruiters, and basically these guys were, were to try to schmooze you on board to signing with the trucking company while not really offering you a great deal of money. They'd, they'd offer you all sorts of weird and wonderful incentive-based programs and bonus programs and anything to make it look like this was an attractive pay package, when usually it wasn't. These days, if you're going to a trucking company, if you're going to change jobs, or if you're getting into a, a truck for the first time, you're going to face a recruiter. It's nothing to be afraid of because the honest truth of the matter is these recruiters need you worse than you need them. There's thousands of trucking jobs out there, so don't be afraid of the recruiter. There are some basic things that you should do to prepare, though. For meeting a recruiter. The recruiter will try to control the interview and do all the talking, but truly, you know, it's it's all right to let him do the talking, but you need to go in there with a prepared set of questions and make sure you get satisfactory answers to all those questions because these are the questions that are going to be affecting how much you make, and that's what it's really all about. How much are they going to pay you? So you need to be prepared to understand what every company pays, how they pay, when they pay. There's a myriad of things that you need to know to help you choose the best carrier for you. Here are some of the most basic questions that you need to be prepared to ask the recruiter and make sure you get satisfactory answers for all your questions. Take notes. It'll keep the uh, recruiter on his toes and make him a little more honest. Almost all carriers these days pay by the mile. So the first thing you want to know is, how much is the mileage rate? What do you pay for mile? The next thing you want to know is, how do they calculate how many miles you've driven? Is it based on the PC Miler program? Or is it based on a hub mile system? How do you know that you're getting paid for all the miles that you've driven? What do the stops and the drops and the picks and the waiting time pay. Everything should pay something. Everything you do in service of this company should pay something. Usually drops and picks pay by the dollar amount, 20 or $40 a drop or a pick. Some of them will say, well, the first pick is free. <laughs> why is that? I have no idea why you should work for free, but some carriers think you should. Uh, you want to know what the waiting time is worth because all carriers, all truck drivers have waiting time. And nobody these days anymore can sit and afford to wait for free. 
everything needs to be paid time. All the time you put in for that carrier needs to be paid time. If you're waiting for repairs on your truck, if they own the truck, you want to know what you're being paid as a driver while they fix their truck and they've got you standing around the terminal waiting. You want to know what you're being paid between the loads. You don't want to be sitting in the terminal for free with your feet up waiting on them to decide the next load that's going to be given to you and sit there for free. You want to be paid for your time. You need to be paid for your time. How many hours a week can you expect to work? How often will you be home? How long do you get to stay home when you are home? Can you take passengers? Can you take pets? How old or new are the truck trucks that the fleet is running? Do they have a lot of a lot of breakdown time really is what you're trying to find out. Can you take the truck home at the end of the week? What type of fuel cards are they running? And this is important too because as a driver you want a well recognized fuel card. You want to be able to stop at good truck stops, fuel and use the points on that fuel card for your showers or put them towards your meals or something. So you want a fuel card that works virtually everywhere that's convenient for you and you want to get the points off that fuel card that you can utilize for showers and that type of thing. There's no point in giving the points to the company. They don't need the points. You need the points. You need to ask if you've got to do an hours of service reset on the road, do they pay for that reset or do they just sit you in that truck for 34 hours for free? That's nonsense if they do. Do they at least pay for your meals in your hotel? while you're sitting around for 34 hours. They certainly should. If they don't want to pay for any of that, be damn sure that you're not doing resets on the road, that you do your resets at home. You want to know if they have a benefit package, and you want to know if they run electronic logs, things like that. These are all important to bounce off the recruiter and compare one carrier to another so you know that you're getting the best deal because truly you're shopping for a job. You're shopping for the best job. You don't want to settle for just any job. You're shopping for the best job and these recruiters know that now. They know that there's more jobs out there than there are drivers available. They're trying to attract you. So if they're trying to attract you, they've got to give you satisfactory answers, appealing answers to make you want to come to their company. It's not much difference for an owner operator looking for a different package when hiring somewhere. There are a few more things, um, like the owner operator would want to know if he gets the benefit of a f company fuel price, because big companies often get a break on the price of fuel. Big companies often get a break on the price of parts, like tires for instance, and is that passed on to owner operators that wish to purchase tires through the company. But essentially you're asking the same type of questions. You're trying to determine if you're getting paid and if you're getting fairly paid for all your time while you're at work. That's the name of the game here. If you're an owner operator, you want to know who pays for the plates, who pays for the insurance, what's the insurance deductible amount, is there an insurance buy down program? Important questions like that that will impact your bottom line. No freebies anymore. Who pays for the tolls? Who pays for the lumpers? Are they running electronic logs? And are they going to provide you one? Or how is that going to work? How often are you paid? What's the hold back? How often will I get home? How many weeks on the road do you expect out of me? And how long can I sit at home before you start blowing the phone up, bugging me to come back to work? Owner operators should want to know if they're competing with company trucks for the loads that they'll be pulling and whether or not it's first in first out dispatch or how that works owner operators want to know where they'll be running consulting firms for recruiting programs so if a trucking company is finding that their recruiters aren't bringing in enough drivers the trucking company can hire a consulting firm who will come in and talk to the recruiters and tell them what they're doing wrong or tell them how to uh, generate more sign-ons, that type of thing. And so I listened to one of these programs offered by a consulting firm. Treat your drivers better. Uh, talk nicer to your drivers. 
respect your drivers more. None of the tips were pay your drivers better. It was all about it was all about coddling the drivers. They don't have recruiters or recruiting consultants for oil rig workers or guys that go crab fishing in the North Sea. They don't need recruiters or consultants because it's the money that's doing the recruiting. But here in trucking, when the money's gotten so bad they need to hire recruiters, they're coddling you to try to get you on board because they don't want to pay you. They just want to want to patch on the head and, and trick you into thinking you're getting a good deal. And I find that I find that hilarious because most truckers are a lot smarter than that. One other line that did come out of this consulting firm, they were telling the recruiters, if you ever want to lose a truck driver, piss off his wife. And that'll be the end of him working for you. And I thought, boy, that's pretty funny because I know in my case that's certainly true. They piss off my wife, I'm gone out of there. I thought that was funny, but it was a it was an honest tip at least. Remember drivers, there's a driver shortage. The trucking companies and the recruiters need you more than you need them. So you'll be able to find a good job out there. There are good jobs out there. You just have to look. Take care and I'll talk to you on the back. Home.